Hey guys, another day, a daily dose of info coming right at you. It's Rob Wynn here. Uh, before I get started today with this little brief message, a little bit on health and spirituality, I want to address a couple questions that I got yesterday uh, concerning vitamin C. Uh, someone asked, uh, can you overdose on it? And the answer really is yes, but no. And the reason I say that is because Vitamin C, again, is water soluble. Your body does not collect it. So it's very difficult to uh, become toxic with vitamin C because it is eliminated out of the body regularly. And another thing was vitamin C, natural or synthetic? Well, I always prefer natural, okay? I'm not saying that synthetic is a bad thing, but uh, your body uh, uh, is built to assimilate natural foods, of course, if you're not allergic, but I always prefer uh, natural if possible. And if you don't have natural, then you can supplement with vitamin C. Same thing with vitamin D. Someone asked about toxicity uh, in that. Now, vitamin D is fat soluble, so it's stored in your fat tissue. Uh, can you OD on it? Yes, you can, but keep this in mind. Vitamin D, which I prefer, and I suggest you get it through sunlight, you can supplement it. Uh, studies have shown supplement does a pretty good job as well, but I love natural sunlight. So vitamin D, you can OD. The prescribed IU, which is international units, is around anywhere between uh, roughly 2,000 a day, two to 4,000 a day. To overdose on vitamin D, you would have to consume approximately, I think, 60,000 IUs per day for several months. So, unless you're like addicted to uh, vitamin D, which I don't think you can become, uh, you're not going to overdose on it. So, again, you have to uh, take about 12 of these bottles every day. But it, it's, so anyways, you're cool with that. But I want to talk about something, uh, another. Uh, nutrient slash vitamin and that's water okay I know uh, water is considered more of a, an element not necessarily a nutrient as far as vitamin uh, but I think that water is so so very very important for our health for one um, studies have shown that 75% on any given day in America the average American is dehydrated 75% of us are dehydrated. Now water plays an, an, an extreme part of our lives. Of course, it is one of the elements that are required for life. Our bodies are made up of about 60% or so of, of water and, and we function on water. Water helps bring all these wonderful nutrients uh, to tissue and so forth. And uh, let me share a few benefits of water real quick. For one, water helps our physical performance. You know, you see athletes sweating, exercising. Uh, water, very important. If you don't get enough water, you can develop cramps. You can have uh, issues with uh, muscle mobility and all that. Uh, another benefit would be memory. Uh, uh, if you're in the desert and you didn't have enough water, guess what? Your brain starts suffering. You start looking at that uh, hallucination, right? That, that mirage. What do you normally have a mirage of? It's water because your brain is telling you, I'm thirsty, give me water. So water affects our brain. Water also affects um, uh, constipation, you know? The, you know what I'm saying? You want it easy, you want it to come out, slip and slide, you need to stay uh, hydrated. So water definitely helps that part of our system. Uh, also, I had a, a in my life of, of health, I've run into people and said, hey Rob, I got kidney stones, man. First thing I do is I tell them, you're not, I can guarantee you're not drinking enough water. Uh, quick real remedy with kidney stones, uh, prevention is not only drinking water, but adding a little bit of lemon to that water helps break down those kidney stones. And of course, if you stay hydrated, I think the recommendation is about eight glasses a, a day for an adult. Uh, the key is, Americans drink a lot. We drink a lot of coffee. We drink a lot of, uh, of soda. We drink a lot of things, but we're not drinking enough water. And water is, again, a very important factor to the function of our bodies and our well being. And also, water helps you actually lose weight as well. Um, let me tell you a little trick drink a 
glass of water about a half hour before a meal. What that water does is help fill and satisfy you and it uh, makes you feel more fuller and you'll actually cut some calories. And so water is a good thing. Now, speaking of water, I want to transition real quick to a story in the Bible that Jesus talks about water and it's a very unique story and it's found in John chapter 4 and it's where Jesus is at a well and, and let me read that uh, let me just read that story to you I'm going to start in John chapter 4 verse 5 so he came to town Jesus of Samaria called Sychar near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph Jacob's well was there so Jesus weary okay he was tired he was in human form Okay, and he was tired from this journey. He was sitting beside a well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you would you ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? Because the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, he would give you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself as did his sons and his livestock. And Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, speaking of this well water. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Check with the, what the woman says. The woman says to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will, be thirsty, uh, so that I will not be thirsty or will have to come here to draw water. Now, listen to this next verse. I really believe this woman was being sarcastic with Jesus. Jesus says, hey, I got this living water and, you, and, you, and you'll never thirst again. And I think she really kind of sarcastic says, well, give it to me. You know, if you got this water, give it to me. And the reason I say this, look at this next response. Jesus says this in verse 16. Jesus said to her, go, call your husband and come here. He sasses her back. The woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you're right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, okay? You sleep around town, that's what Jesus said. And the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive you are a prophet. Our fathers worship on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, woman, Believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor Jerusalem will you worship the Father. Now listen up. You will worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is here now when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship Him, him in spirit. Let me end with this verse, 25. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming. She doesn't know it's him yet, who is called the Christ. And when he comes, he will tell us all things. In a rare instant, in the Bible, Jesus decides to reveal himself to this Samaritan. He says to her, verse 26, Jesus said to her, I am who speak to you and he. So this whole time, Jesus is challenging her and, and they're, they're kind of sassing back and forth. And at the end, Jesus says, look, this living water, all, all this, what you're talking about, this Messiah coming, it's me, I'm the one. And if you read on, this, this woman is just amazed. And she goes and uh, begins to tell the whole town, they all come you know, to Jesus. And uh, I think it's really cool, again, we see how Jesus says, this water, referring to the Holy Spirit that he was gonna give to people would allow us not to thirst again. Now, in this whole time of viruses, and I've been talking about vitamin C and D, if you haven't checked out the videos on Sunday and Monday, go back and check it out. But today, water is very important for our bodies. But Jesus gives us this example 
of the water that we need spiritually in our lives. And I have a little quick uh, demonstration I want to just kind of share with you before we close. So this woman's at this well, okay? She's And she's she's had her religion, okay? She's had her spirituality, okay? She's had, you know, the do's and don'ts of life, okay? And, and, th and this cup represents man's religion, okay? This is us trying to worship God, okay? And then Jesus comes along. I know it. You know, I know you can't see God in who he is. Okay, let's just imagine that this jug of water is God. Okay, he's the big, he's the big jug of water. You can't see him. But Jesus comes along, okay? Because Jesus says, I and the Father are one. So what you see in this cup is what's in that big jug. Would you agree? So everything that this water tastes like is everything that's in this jug. They're separate containers, but yet the water inside is the same. And so Jesus tells this woman, if you believe basically in me, I'm the Messiah, I'm going to give you a water that religion can't, okay? And when a believer begins to, or when a person receives Christ, God promises the Holy Spirit and begins to fill the new person with that's right, living water, God's spirit. And in that scripture, Jesus says that you will overflow like a spring. And what's happening is here, is we begin to see that when you receive Christ in your life, the religious rhetoric, the do's and don'ts, trying to get into heaven, begin to get out of your mind. All that's out. And this is what's happening to you on a spiritual sense. You're becoming like God. I know that sounds pretty crazy, but you know, that's blasphemy. No, it's not. Jesus says that the same spirit that raised him from the dead is the same spirit that is now is in the believers. You see, the drink before was Diet Coke. Okay, and I'm slamming Diet Coke. And that represented our lack of God. Religion is like that. Jesus is different than this. He offers a relationship. He offers, he offers to come into our life and give us this spirit, his spirit, that helps us overcome. And during this hard time, you might think, man, you know, I'm stressed. And if you're a believer, remember, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. And if you're out there and you're an unbeliever and you're not sure, I challenge you, like this woman at the well, Jesus is the Messiah. He is God in the flesh. The Bible says that he is the image of the invisible God. Jesus, God, same spirit. We as Christians don't worship a three-headed God. We talk about the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We worship one God who came and died on the cross for us. And now through Him, we can receive everlasting life. And one day He will return and we'll be able to meet Him. I look forward to that time. So. As we close today, remember, water, very important in your life, from a physical point of view, health point of view, get it in you, drink it daily. And remember, God wants to give you even something better than water, His Spirit. And without it, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. And He wants you there. He's just a repentance away. See you tomorrow. Bye.